Hey, this is a match once again. What about to the videos? Another paid request this time for Tomas. Thank you so much for that. And for those inter interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And he wanted me to talk about a film called Dangerously Close from 1986, which is a film directed by the late Albert Payun. Now, I might have seen this film before. And uh, this was never a fan of this movie F for a couple reasons. I thought that for a film called Dangerously Close, it didn't really feel that dangerous of a movie. It felt a bit tame. I think some of the actors were miscast in those roles. And what says that you have some actors that would have been better. Because, okay, you got John Stockwell. I think he helped write the film. He's a big part of it as the leader of this group of vigilante students called the Sentinels, where they find less desirable people in the student body and will teach them a lesson. And pretty much, you think... In the beginning, you think they're going to kill this person, but they don't. Instead, they're just scaring the shit out of them, and they have paintballs. And that's to steer them to being... to conform more. But, while they leave, the guy is shaking up, and then some person in a car listening to classic, classical music shows up, and this guy starts talking smack until ultimately the person in the car gets out, kills the person, slits their throat, and you don't see anything, but you, you get the idea. And so throughout the film you're wondering who killed this person, and you have this lead guy, which I forget his name, I think it's Eddie Peck? Who is his pool cleaner? He's also the editor of the newspaper. He has his friend who's a punker called Truder. Not free Truder, but Truder like K R O O G E R. So they're friends, and Eddie wants to do a story on the Sentinels. So it's kind of this thing that you see in a lot of these movies where. Your lead guy goes with the the leader of this rebels, but then they start hanging out with each other, then they start bonding with each other, and then one starts going to that group while his older friends are going, why the fuck are you going with them, huh? You want to be one of them now? So, your editor of the newspaper, your Eddie Peck, again, I think that's his name. If not, I apologize. He's slowly being drawn into... The Sentinels, led by John Stockwell. Among that group, you also have Tom Matthews from Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, and The Return of Living Dead. Come on, Jason, you pussy! You know, Tommy Jarvis from Friday the 13th Part 6. He's in this as sort of kind of the second command, but he's the guy that has a bit more of a heart to him among the group. Feels a bit more guilty steering these people. And are we going too far steering these people? You have Don Michael Paul. Who starred in this film called Rolling Vengeance. And we're going to direct. Was it Half Past Dead with Steven Seagal. And he directed I think what Tremors 5 and 6 I believe. Or did he do 7 as well. He did a lot of the like Tremors 5 through whatever. I think he directed most of those. He did a lot of directed video films he directed. Not a very good director. You could argue not a very good actor either. This way, he's been very over the top. He's he's much more of the rowdy, hot-headed guy. He, he's fairly over the top in this. And they're the rich elite. And they'll do crazy stuff, like they'll be riding one night, and Don Michael Paul starts shooting at Miguel Nunez Jr. Speaking of Return of Living Dead, another Return of Living Dead alum, alumni. 
not just Tom Matthews, but Bedelia Nunez Jr., who was also in Friday the 13th Part 5, with uh, those damn enchiladas, yeah. Juana Man, all that stuff. He doesn't have too bit of a part. He's in like two or so scenes. That scene and another scene where they confront him in stool. And again, the the lead guy, he's being influenced and kind of wanted to be part of this crowd and at one point even saves John Stockwell from a guy stabbing him. And the guy who's going to stab him, I'm sitting there going, why do I recognize this fucking guy? And then he has one scene later where when Eddie Peck, our lead, is realizing something is going on, something strange, he tosses this guy briefly, and the guy he's talking to is the guy who tried to stab John Stockwell. It's Robert Bressler. Uh, Grady from Nightmare on Street Part 2, Frey's Revenge. He was in Vamp. You know, I like Robert Rustler. Sometimes they come back as what the leader of the the greaser 50s uh, bad guys that come back to haunt Tim Matheson. I'm bad with names. Tim Matheson's character. And good movies, sometimes they come back. I'm sitting there going, wait, you got Robert Rustler who thrashing that's another one i enjoyed with him and josh brolin you got tom matthews and robert rustler why the fuck are these two not the leads like if tom matthews was the lead and robert rustler was the the bad guy or even reverse robert rustler was the lead and tom matthews was the bad guy i think this would have been a lot better because both leads in my opinion sucked and that's one of the issues about this is the guy playing the lead, I don't know what else he's done. He was bland. He was boring. He didn't really have much tenacity or assertiveness in the third. I just, just him as is really forgettable. And John Stackrow, I've always said, was a bad actor. Christine, my science project, he is always so fucking wooden. He is so wooden in pretty much any performance I've seen him in so far, at least that I remember. He was wooden. He's the I like Christine, but he's the worst part of Christine. I don't mind I I like my science project, but I don't love it. What, the big reason is because John Stout was the lead. I'm like, why isn't Fisher Stevens the lead in that? It's here. I guess because he helped co write the film. So hey, or he was, he, or produce it. I forget what it is. John Stockwell had a bit behind it. Hey, if that's the case, I gotta be the bad guy. Well, he should sure play like one of the smaller roles if he had to be in it. Because I really do believe like Tom Matthews or Robert Russell would have been better as either of the lead roles. At least in my opinion. And then the, other than some decent soundtrack, decent songs, Addicted to Love by Robert Palmer. I do like that song. That's on the soundtrack. Then again, decent soundtrack. That's really, and maybe some all right cinematography, 80s style with the way those films looked, where even the schools would seem like there's a smoky atmosphere in, in the schools. Those are really the only two things I could think of that I give positive bits to. Because a lot of the film at times is rather boring. I mean, yeah, I think this is the third film Abba Pyron did. After The Sword and the Sorcerer, which I did like. And Radio After Dreams, which I did not like. I think that also had John Stockwell in it. I did not like Radioactive Dreams, but I did like Sword and the Sorcerer. It w and this is 86, so it wouldn't be until a few years later where he did Cyborg, and then Nemesis, and uh, Dollman. So for me, I would probably D is for Dollman, not for Dangerously Close. It was kind of a shitty title for a movie, Dangerously Close. Close to what? Close to falling asleep and driving your car off the cliff? Dangerously close to what? Erection? Exertion? 
compulsion, <laughs> expulsion, diarrhea, galleria, fettuccine, bettuccine, tutti frutti, on rudy. Danger is close to what? Orgasm? Danger is close to blowing my fucking brains out. Danger is close to ejecting VCR at the time, you know, DVD, whatever the fuck it's on, and saying, let me just watch another movie. Because there's plenty of movies about high schoolers that you watch. Or hell, I think there's a, there's a few other films about vigilantes. Like, if I want to watch, it's a different story, but a teacher dealing with vigilantes. I watched Class of 1984, which I found much more satisfying than this. It's just, it's not an action movie. I don't know if I would say it's a thriller, because I didn't really find it that thrilling. Like I said, after the opening incident, it's not like, oh, tears are getting knocked off one by one. It's more our pool cleaner slash editor of the newspaper trying to fit in and his punk friend, who honestly, he was so annoying. I'm like, I kind of want him to get killed. <laughs> I mean, I can't blame... The bad guys won the get rid of the punk rocker because he was f not even a rocker, the punker, Kruger, because he was fucking annoying too. I'm like, good, get rid of him. I, I don't blame him. Let me join you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, get rid of him. Cool. Because other than, again, your editor, the lead being influenced by John Stockwell, hanging out with the other Sentinels. You have the girl who is a former girlfriend of John Stockwell, so you know she's going to hit it off with the lead, and they're going to get together. That's fairly predictable. Spoilers. They go into spoilers. John Stockwell and that punker, Kruger, get in a fight in school. They chase Kruger, stare the shit out of him, rip an ear and out of his ear, look like they're going to hang them, but then they stop. Which I think they made a mistake with that. I think what they should have done is, well, have a look like he's being hung and then cut away. And then he goes missing. See, I think what the mistake was is number one, well, the two leads, that's number one. Number two, make it so boring. Number three, they play their card too early at the beginning of the film. Where we know from the beginning what they're doing is hazing kids. That should have been more of a mystery. Where they're hazing the kid, and then it looks like he's ready to shoot the kid. Then it cuts away, and then the, the leads go, well, we didn't do that. But then, okay, are they saying it because they don't want to get killed? I mean, are they saying it because they don't want to get in trouble? Are they lying? Or are they telling the truth? And then that's up to the audience until the end where there's video. They don't want to show the video because they don't want to show how they... It would seem like they killed them, but they didn't. Or... They don't even want to be looked at as suspects. And uh, it just, they, it should have been much more of a mystery of is this group killing people or not? So that the whole group would be a threat. And then when Tom Matthews did nervous, you could assume, oh, he's dead nervous because he feels guilty that they killed someone. And then when they realize, oh, wait a minute, no, we didn't kill them. What? And then they watch the videotape. They say, oh, it's a paintball. What the hell? Yeah, we left. And then maybe we, you know, then the movie, we see the footage. Because they do videotape their stuff. And then we, as the viewers, see what happened. And then it's revealed that one person did it. And Again, they, they just, same with uh, when the guy's being hung. They let him go. And then they rip the earring out. So later on, 
when the the lead guy and his new girlfriend now they see the video footage they know his friend pruder has been missing but they see the footage of being hunted they assume oh he got killed and but we the audience already know it didn't happen that way because the way they play off in the movies that he's let go he walks by himself he steps in front of a car and that's another mistake you hear the brakes of the car Stree. If someone was trying to murder him, why would they put on the brakes? They wouldn't. It's like... If it was an accident, okay, it'd be a hit and run, but that'd be weird to put in this when the first scene we've seen is a murder. So again... Uh, but there's a reason they put that in there. But at the same time, it kind of, that's what I mean, like, you look at certain stuff, it's like, well, why did you do it this way? Why did you do it that way? It just, it made the plot less interesting. Because by the third act, I didn't, Tom Matthews goes to look at some videotapes at this place that the Sentinels hang out, the shelter. Someone comes up and strangles him. Then the lead guy is trying to find his friend Kruger, the punter. He doesn't know what's going on. He finds a bit of like his earring. Oh, uh, you know what? The cops don't believe him because they stick up for the the rich elite kids. The girl then says, "Oh, by the way, do you know this thing called the shelter?" They go there. Now I'm thinking, oh, they don't find the dead body of Tom Matthews and. Maybe then they'll come in and then one will think the other killed him. You killed him. No, you killed him. And then this fight happens. No. Pretty much, they looked at these tapes. They understand, they assume, oh, they killed this kid at the beginning of the film. That's The body's been found. Kruger, who's missing. Oh, and the way they found out Tom Matthews' death seems very convenient. They make a phone call to like the school and the secretary's like um something bad happened oh what it well see uh this kid i forget his name the character the tom matthews he he died i'm like some secretary just knows is going to tell the editor of the school newspaper yeah this kid died when I don't know, if it's a murder investigation, aren't you supposed to, like, keep it hush-hush? And how the fuck did she know in the first place? And then, like, she had no qualms, just, yeah, just tell everybody, you fucking blabbermouth. <laughs> Thank God the secretary was a blabbermouth. I mean, do you think it'd be like they find the body? No. So as he, the, the lead guy hears this, the other sentinels come in... They get in a bit of a fight. And then the fight just stops. Just John Stackwell comes in to stop it. I'm like, this seems like... Why is the Sentinel... I mean... The way the Sentinels are behaving... Like they want to kill... Like, they're taking the girl... It looks like they're going to rape her. And the other, like... If this is like rough... I mean, it just... It doesn't really work in the steam of the plot. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Because John Stockwell stops it and goes, Oh, I'm sorry, baby. I didn't know it was you. And there's like a standoff. And then there's dialogue where they think this other guy, this older... I forget if he was the principal, the teacher. I forget. The principal, the teacher, whatever. This adult who hung out with the Sentinels. He was with the group as well. He's on the tapes. Yeah, I want to say he was the principal. I forget. You forget, I forget sometimes. Just that's how uninterested I was in the story. And pretty much, like, after this little dinky fight, they just talk. And they go, actually, that guy didn't come back. Remember that night we fucked with that one kid? 
He's the one who never came back. Oh, yeah? And what about this guy? What about, you know, Tom Matthews? And then Don Michael Paul's like, what, he's dead? Yeah. And Don Michael Paul freaks out. And then they assume that that principal teacher guy is the one who's the killer. And then that guy comes in. He immediately pulls out a gun. Spoiler alert. Big spoilers. There's a struggle. John Stockwell shoots the guy. Cops come. It's all blamed on him. One... Kruger is alive. Apparently that car, there's a reason why you heard the brakes. That grant doesn't make sense when you're thinking, well, wait a minute. If someone's trying to kill him and we're supposed to believe he was killed, why would the person put on the brakes? Because it's not someone who tried to kill him. It's someone who stopped and helped him. And the guy went to a concert. Oh, man. Everything's going okay here? So the guy's alive. Went to a concert. John Stockwell just apologizes, walks away. The, the the teacher principal guy is going to take the fall for the two deaths, Tom Matthews and the guy at the beginning. And then you cut to John Stockwell in a car, listening to classical music, and twist. He's the killer. He killed the kid at the beginning. He killed Tom Matthews because both times we see a figure in a car listen to the same music, same classical music. He gets away with it, no one the wiser. So, you don't really get much of a satisfying payoff to the film. The guy who's one of the worst actors of the movie gets away with it. The school editor isn't as smart as he appears to be, just makes him seem really fucking dumb. I guess technically makes John Stockwell's character much smarter that, as well as convenient. Well, I imagine if the, the guy had pulled a gun and said, let's talk about it, let's speak about this. Or if he didn't have a gun at all and said, let's talk, let's speak about it, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Anyway. It is what it is. And that's the thing is that... Rest in peace, Abba Payoon. There's a couple of his films I like. But at times, he, he makes his movies with such a... Different type of storytelling I'm not a fan of. Whether it be this one or... What was that one? Blood Match? Like, he's a guy that, okay, I do appreciate, he, I think he thought he was a better direct, he thought he was a better storyteller than he really was. Uh, I'm sorry to speak ill of the deceased. When it was just straightforward action movie, whether it be Sword and Sorcerer, Dollman, Cyborg, Nemesis, I think he was more successful. But like the alternate cut of Cyborg, where he's trying to be a bit more pretentious, didn't really work out the best. Same with some of his other movies, even like Captain America. Not so much. The 1991. This one, I mean, it's not close to his worst. Not even close, but yeah, I was not a fan of this movie. Again, I know I've seen... I, I might be confused with another movie that I've seen before, but this is a bland, boring lead, a wooden antagonist. Actors like Tom Matthews, Robert Russ are completely underutilized. Same with Miguel Nunez. How Miguel Nunez is the lead? Why not? That'd be cool. Miguel Nunez in the lead? School editor of the newspaper? That'd be different. He give it maybe he give some wit, some humor, give some life to that character, and even then it's like it's not a lot, it's not a big body count, so you don't get a full stretch of the danger of this group. And it's not even the group you're afraid of, because we already know from the first fucking ten minutes, five minutes that it's one guy doing it, not the whole group. Maybe your thought is, well, who within the group? But wouldn't it be more? 
that the entire group maybe we have to fear but then you find out later no there's you know we're not doing what you think we're doing and then again the ending is just seems like it just, it's a grown twist like really I'm sure it's meant to be oh my god what a twist it was more like okay mm -hmm. how there's a uh, so if you like the film that's cool just just my thoughts on it so with that said thanks for watching we'll see you guys later bye bye